Welcome back to Level Construction. Now that Logan has got all of the structural static meshes in place, it's time for us to move on to placing decoration static meshes throughout the level, just so that we have all that rich detail in place. Now we're going to try to keep the videos just a little bit shorter, so if you wish to skip any of these sections, you can, because there are a lot of static meshes to add in. And these aren't quite as important as all of the structural static meshes, where those needed to fit together very precisely in order to give us the catwalks with the railing that looked proper. So with that, Logan, in this video, here, let's go ahead and get the, I guess, the interesting decorations up into the ceiling, into that little alcove that's cut away up there, as well as do a little cleanup on some of the lifts and doors. Okay. To begin with, um, let's take a look at the, uh, the ceiling. Let's fill this little indention in the ceiling with some round uh, quarter circle meshes. Now, of course, I need to find those meshes, so let's jump into the static mesh browser and let's load up the LT support package. All right, we're going to be looking for the organic pillar O2C and O2C1. I believe you're going to start out with O2C. All right, here we have O2C. So let's select that mesh. Actually, wait a minute, yeah. go back one second. Let me take a peek. Which there's one did you go? There's O2C and there's O2C1. I think um, O2OC2. Okay. Yeah, there we go. That would have been fun, yeah. Good uh -huh. catch on that. Yeah, let's grab uh, pillar O2C. O2C. Okay. And with the correct pillar selected now, let's add it up to the ceiling. So we'll add actor... We'll add the static mesh actor, and it seems to be stuck to the ceiling. If we scroll out in any of the orthographic views, we can see that it's aligned. Stuck to the ceiling, the aligned the wrong way, orientated the wrong way, <laughs> pretty much everything. So we need to do some rotation. Let's switch over to rotation, and we'll grab maybe 90 degrees in the top view, and then let's see, how about a front view? I think that'll work out the best. As a matter of fact, front view will be very useful here because we can see the contour of that brush that makes up the ceiling. So we know we need to rotate this brush something like that. That's about negative 135 degrees. Now, this may look like a very odd orientation with the way Logan's putting it in here right now, but have faith. In just a minute, it's going to all kind of make sense. And here, some of this will have to be almost half guesswork. I'm not going for incredible pre uh, precision with these, just getting enough meshes to nicely fill in the, uh, the ceiling. Yeah, once again, we're just adding that background detail, if you will. That looks pretty centered. Um, I do want to scale this mesh up somewhat, since the idea is that we copy a bunch of these and have them fill the length of the ceiling. I don't have to use too many, so I'm going to take the scale Move up. it one to the right for me. I'm, um, you mean like that? That way. For in, in, yeah, that viewport. Up in O and Y. So, yeah. so just over, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's okay. We're we're snapping just a tad high. I was looking at the center line. Yeah. Or oh, this? You're looking at the center line. Yeah. If you want, we could uh, grab a drag grid of maybe four. Okay. That's and if we do say. that and drag, we could. Real still close. That. Well, okay. Look, let's, while we're in here, let's let's try two. If we do. Uh, yeah, Logan's gonna choke me here. I'm just getting picky on it. The, there we go. And yeah. even that isn't perfect. Oh, you're right. Rolling, but I mean, that is that's, that's a lot pretty closer. close. Yeah. So I mean, that might help later when we have these edge meshes and we're trying to align things to the corners. Sure. So, All right, let's go ahead and change our yeah, drag grid. Bump my grid back up to 8. I may need 4 when it comes to some of the uh, horizontal aligning, but we'll let that be until we actually need it. Okay, let's get that thing scaled up now. All right, I'm going to grab my uh, draw scale 3D and Y, and let me bump that all the way up to 3 so we have a nice wide ceiling piece. And before I finish, before I start copying these, let me get the two side meshes next to it set up so that I have a good idea of how these are lining up and if I need to adjust this one anymore. So we'll jump back into the static mesh browser, and we'll grab pillar O2C1, C1, yep. C1 right next yeah, to C. And let's add this in to get an idea of what it looks like. And it looks like we're going to have to do the same kind of rotation. So we'll jump back into the top view, and then I'll jump into a front view, and we'll rotate the same way down about negative 135 degrees. Actually, probably more looking at it, because it needs to kind of slide down off the side of that one. Yeah, towards the corner of our indention. So let's see how that's working. Taking close note, that's actually Ooh, looking pretty almost good. I mean, there's just dead a on. tiny edge, and that edge might not even be noticeable. Cause nope, it's I think that looks good, Logan. And let me check here. Are we we need to scale this up so we yeah. have an idea of what it's doing. So same thing, we'll grab our draw scale 3D and Y and widen that out. Maybe even line it up in the top view just a little bit so that they kind of snap together. Looking at the centers, we can't see any ceiling, and that was the whole idea here. So I'm kind of liking where that's going. Let's take this now and duplicate it over to the other side. I'll grab um, rotation. I'll duplicate by dragging 90 degrees, and then we can slide it off to the side just till we hit this corner. And I think we have just 
Just caught that. It'll go through the, uh, the door frame mesh just a little bit, but it doesn't actually look too bad because you have to zoom way up in on it to realize that that's happening. So, I mean, I think that's starting to look And right nice. now, you guys might see that little bit yeah. of concrete that's sticking out from your uh, pieces on the left and on the right. Don't worry, that's going to be hidden in just a second as we start lining these things up next to one another. Right. So, I'm kind of looking, liking the way this is going. Yeah, so that's good. Let's grab these meshes now, and let me move them over to the side so I can start duplicating some of them. We'll slide these over to the edge. Now, these this is not going to be the final resting place, as I need to have all of the meshes in place before I decide exactly how much they need to be moved off to the side. So there looks like a good starting point. And let me begin duplicating. So we'll start alt-dragging. And now this is going to be kind of important, and that is getting the spacing set up properly. I don't want to have so much spacing that we can see the gray ceiling, so I'm going to bring this back some. That's looking good, but I want to fit a lot of these meshes in, so I might actually drag them back. So there we have a, what looks like a perfect fit. I'll drag it one back past that. And we'll drag all these across and see Wait if that Wait a minute, did you just go one further, or was I just seeing I things? think um, I think some of the other views just updated. I got you. Because I went and nudged the manipulator, so I okay. think they, they jumped a little. But um, let me, I'll, I'll go with this for a while. And to select these more quickly, what I'll do is I'll right-click with the current selection, grab all matching static meshes, and that gets all of these meshes. Nice and quick. Then we can alt drag duplicate again. And since the top view is getting very cluttered and I'm aligning these up in the perspective to get the offsets right, I'm going to keep sliding the perspective and we'll use that to line it up. So there's what I would consider flush, and there's one in. Okay. And let's see. Just alt drag like another one? Oh. Well, yeah, and that, that'll. Because we're getting pretty close. Yeah, we are now. getting close to the edge. So alt drag another set and then slide the camera down. I think you hit that one right on. Probably slide it one back because there's the gap. Oh, there's okay, yeah, together, you want one up. And there's one back. There we go. And let's see. And now so just one. grab one set of the end ones. So one final set. Let's duplicate that over. It's going to push us outside the level a little bit, but we don't care. This is going to make it fit a little bit nicer once we move the entire thing around. And really, we almost need one more. Yeah, we do. Okay. So alt drag one more set. That looks about right, but I want to space it off just to make sure. So there's flush, there's one in. And let me select everything. So I'll select matching static meshes again, grab everything, and then start to slide stuff over. Because you can see we've got, from the center row of lights, we have quite a bit of space on this side. And the center lights go through the wall on the other side. Yeah. So let me zoom out just a little. As a matter of fact, let me grab a side view, because that gives us a nice edge of this brush, edge of the other brush, so we can kind of start lining these up so that they look like they fit pretty well. And that's actually that's pretty, pretty close, good. yeah. So we've got a set of three, a centerpiece, another set of three. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking that. That's looking good. Very nice. All right, so we'll just go ahead and call that done. Let's go ahead and move over to the lift on the far right side in the other room. Or actually, no, it's this one back here. Yeah, it is. Uh, let's take a look up underneath and above. So if we Ooh. look into the flow, look what's <laughs> happened. Now, if you remember, this lift originated in the slime pit room. That's the right. slime pit room was significantly deeper. So we've got some unnecessary meshes that were left when we copied over, and we just didn't happen to look through the floor, so we didn't know that they existed. So what I'm going to do is spend just a minute and clean up some of these meshes that we don't need, because meshes that are completely through the floor are just not necessary. We can't see them. So let me delete off the bottom four, and it looks like we can delete the next four. And I didn't mean to move, but that's okay this time. Because they're going away. I'm about to delete them. Grab that last one. And we can delete these as well because we have some excess popping out of the top of the level. Extreme yeah. from the top. There if we, we go. move up to the top. We've got some spare um, yeah. space left on those. And these ones are almost to the floor, so we can actually grab even the final four and delete those as well. Then grab all the remaining ones. And let me see if I can get just a little bit clever in selecting those. I'm going to go to a top view and drag a selection around both the pillars and the lift. Show only that selection. Switch to a side view. Drag a selection around the pillars. And then I can just deselect the lift. And now I have only the pillars selected. And I still happen to have the floor visible, How which convenient. makes a good alignment point. So I can just drag these down until they snap to the floor. Nice. Then I can bring everything back. And there we have a nice alignment, and we're not wasting space. Though looking at these steel girder bars, those extend through both the top and the bottom. And as a matter of fact, looking at it, knowing that these uh, floor panels are the halfway point of the room, we can see that these extend exactly halfway down and then halfway through the ceiling. Mm -hmm. It almost looks like they're about 512 units tall, which would mean we could delete 
one set of them and just move the other set down. That sounds good. So we could grab the two remaining ones, maybe switch two. Let's see what would be convenient. Maybe a front view? Yeah, front view will work right here. And then constrain to Z, drag these down until they snap to the floor. And then we can go up and check the ceiling. And we're fitting perfectly on the ceiling. And it looks like I've got an extra one, I think. I think one got an extra one got duplicated when I was using Alt a little bit too frivolously. So let's kill that out as well. And we've got the remaining two steel girders now fitting perfectly in the room. Very nice. All right, Logan, I think this is pretty much everything we wanted to do in this video. Like I said at the introduction of this video, we were going to try to keep things a little tighter. Oh, we can go ahead and fix this real quick while we're here. Thinking about it, yeah. I remember when we first dropped this door, and I, I hinted at that we may take a look at the floor a little later, because as soon as I dropped it in and scaled it, we noticed that some of these floor tiles were sticking through the bottom of the door. Mm -hmm. And looking at it, we could probably fix it if we move it up just a little bit. Let me dra drop my drag grid down just a little so that I don't move it up too much. But just moving it up four units fixes that. Now it does levitate off the tiles just a tiny little bit, but that's a very, very small amount. And if you're looking at that, you're probably already in the slime. So. Mm -hmm. And it looks a lot nicer than having tiles sticking through the door. Now one thing it does cause is this door was aligned to match up perfectly with the frames. And now it goes a little bit too high. So we'll need to rescale it if we want everything to snap uh, exactly as it was. So what I can do is, with the door frame still selected, grab one of these frame meshes. We'll show only that selection, so that I can get a new measurement for how far I need the door to be set. Let me zoom out in a, in a front view here, and see, looking at that, we have that much of an overlap, four units, which makes sense, because we just moved it up four units. So let me see if I can drag out a new measurement to use for scaling this particular doorway. If we drag just to the bottom, we need about, let's see, 253 units it looks like and right now we're at 257 so we're going for 253 let me bring a calculator up we know that the door was originally 240 so 250 uh, actually 253 divided by 240 should give us whoops wrong way to um, what was it 250 or excuse me 240 divided by 253 gives us some um, Nice, odd-looking scale. Actually, no, I think I had it right. It was um, 240 divided by 253. Or actually, 253 divided by 240. <laughs> 1.05. Let's drop that in for scale. And zoom in. That's almost right. I'm almost curious if that measurement... Because 253 doesn't sound like something that would snap to a grid of 4. 252. That looks better. Yeah. So 252 divided by 240. 1.05. Let's try that. 1.05. Perfect. And there we go. Being just a little bit picky on this one because this is one of the structural components. But uh, 1.05 has that matched up. If we bring all of our meshes back now, we have no problems with the floor and the floor tiles. We have our alignment perfect. Now, really, I mean, we almost could have gotten away with like going four units to the mesh. We probably wouldn't have even seen but it's nice to have all the structural pieces lining up and snap together. Sure. So I think with that, um, that takes care of this uh, segment of decoration meshes. All right, that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot.